13. So after 13 years, if they made one convert a day, they would have 4,745 converts in 13 years. In 33 years, they'd have 12,000 converts. Now, let's say we do it this way. Say, I talk to you here on TV. Mm -hmm. And so, so the thing went off. There, it went back on. So, so say, uh, I, uh, I only make two, dis I help two people a year become Christian only. And so, so uh, say I, I help get you all tuned up. Right. So, not saying you're not, but, right. <laughs> <laughs> but say you get all fired up and you say, hey, this is awesome. I'm going to go out and make two disciples a year too. And you talk to your friends. You convert two people every year. Mm -hmm. I continue to convert two people every year. So the second year, there's four people I've converted. Mm -hmm. The third year, if I convert two people a year, I've converted eight people. But then if I'm teaching them how to convert other people, their friends and family, right. to help them become Christian, mm -hmm. get set free from being entangled in sin, That's right. who would not want to be set free from being controlled by circumstances? That's what Christianity is about. Yeah? Amen. And then we fellowship and we encourage each other. So this is what this Bible study is about. After 13 years, I would have helped 8,192 people become Christians. After 33 years... If I'm uh, helping two people a year become right on the narrow way with mm -hmm. the Lord, and they're out there making two people a year each get on the narrow way with the Lord, then in 33 years, we would have helped 10 billion plus people, which is how many people is in the world. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> so that's what we're talking about. Is it possible to reach the world for Christ in our generation? Yes, it is. But the, the, the sad truth of the fact is not everybody wants to be a disciple. That's right. <laughs> Some, not everybody wants to be set free from being entangled by sin and it controlled by circumstances. That's the hard so part. So that's the fact. The true fact is that not all 10 bi billion people in the world are going to agree no matter if we tied them up and we preach to them. Right. Still <laughs> Every day, gonna they're gonna, <laughs> they might say, let me out of here, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's the conclusion. So now we're going to get on to this. We're going to go through some Bible verses. So first of all, uh, this, is, this is, now I'll tell you straight, this is a canned Bible study. And generally I'm opposed to canned Bible studies. But Mike and I talked about this. We got some scriptures here that we found the reference to that we'll bring into this and you can ask questions but um, uh, I'm, we only got 20 minutes left already with all that <laughs> preliminary oh, math <laughs> so now uh, if we read Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 through 20 I'm going to go to that it's a, it's a simple thing I'm going to read it it says right okay it says verse 18 of Matthew 28 it says Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. That's what Jesus said before he was crucified, or before he rose into heaven. And... Uh, so actually it's before he after he was crucified he told that to his disciples before and when he says surely I am with you always to the end of the age that's because when he ascended into heaven he sent the Holy Spirit and if you can read about that in Acts chapter 1 and 2 it tells Peter's first sermon after they received the Holy Spirit and whoever wanted to be a disciple when they believed the gospel message of Peter in Acts chapter 1 and 2 they said what shall we do and Peter told him, repent and be baptized into the death and resurrection of Christ and you'll receive God's gift of the Holy Spirit and your sins will be forgiven. That's under the condition that they do what he said and that is to repent. You have to repent first. You can't just say the prayer and then go on living your life, right? Right, yeah. You can't make a count. I don't think it's, you know, you, you could try making a counteroffer to God and see how that works. But, but, you know, some people say, 
faith alone or only believe and the devil believes but how's that working out for him yeah. <laughs> well they say faith without works is dead yeah so you show your faith by what you do That's if you right. really have faith you, it's going to become apparent by what you do so now uh, so the question here is it says what does Jesus want everyone to become I think he all wants us to become a disciple there you go him. that's it and and so now we get to the term disciple which is a, uh, I'm going to read this okay because okay. it's a canned Bible study that's what <laughs> I got to do <laughs> it says which is the more popular term disciple or Christian the word Christian let's see I'll turn it this way oh there and I can see it better which is the more popular term disciple or Christian the word Christian only appears three times in the New Testament it is the name those in the world gave the disciples seven years after the church began and that you can see that in Acts chapter 11 the word disciple occurs over 270 times in the New Testament so this is an important information I right. don't think you learned that in Ken Ryder's church no uh -uh. see good this is something new. <laughs> so, so I'm going to read this in Acts chapter 11. Why don't you read it? Sure. Just read that. If it starts to go out, just touch it. It'll come back on. Uh, starting at verse 19? Yeah, just read that right there. That's the a, that's a Bible verse. Now those who had been scattered by the persecution in connection with Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, telling the message only to Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. News of this reached the ears of the church at Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the evidence of the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. These disciples, these disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Okay, so uh, they, were, they were called that by the non-Christian people. Right. And they say, oh, you want to call us Christian? Okay, mm -hmm. fine, good. So it kind of started <laughs> off as like a derogatory term, right? Yeah, yeah. And then they said, well, okay, yeah. it sounds good for us, so we'll use it. Yeah. So, so the point is that if you're saved, you're a Christian. If you're a Christian, you're a disciple. That's right. Where, where I had a misconception before myself. My misconception was that... Uh, I made a decision to follow the Lord. I repented completely. And uh, so now I'm a Christian, just like everybody else that goes to church in America, we all say we're Christians. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, we, I, I had a misconception that if you're a disciple, you're closer to what the 12 apostles were. Oh. You're, you're really out there right. uh, making disciples. Mm -hmm. Where if I said, oh, I'm glad I'm set free from sin, and I'm not controlled by circumstances, but I'm just saying, good for me, too bad for you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and then I'm a Christian, I mm -hmm. can say. But then the disciples are ones that are really helping people become disciples, making disciples like Jesus said to do. And if we're a true Christian, then being a disciple sort of comes along with yeah. Christianity anyway. Yeah. So instead of looking at it as two separate things, if you're a Christian, then you should also be a disciple. Yeah. So... So if you're saved, you're a Christian, and you're a disciple, it's all the same. Yeah. And, and to complicate the matter, I've seen it happen with religions, mm -hmm. where, where some religions that are liberal, they say, oh, you come forward and you say the magic prayer. And that's it. Now you're a Christian. And then later on, if you repent from your sins, you become a disciple. Oh. You know, they say any kind. So you know? kind of in stages. Yeah, so. stages. But of course, uh, praying is good and, and everything, you know, things can be a good step in the right direction. But just because you say a prayer doesn't mean if a Christian and disciple are the same. Uh, so what, what some people say is, 
Oh, we help them become a Christian first, mm -hmm. and then we baptize them after. Then other ones, they say, you have to help them become a disciple first and then baptize them. But that's the same. Christian and disciple is the same. same. So you cannot have one group saying, oh, they're bad because they say they're a Christian because they said the magic prayer. That's right. And then we baptize them. Mm -hmm. uh, when actually Christian and disciple is the same. Mm -hmm. But you can see the fogginess because if people say, if you say the magic prayer and you don't repent, now you're a Christian, you join the Christian religion. Right. And, and, and you might say, I'm in the Christian religion, but on Judgment Day, how's that going to work if you're not repented? Because Jesus says, uh, not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do what my Father in heaven wants them to do. That's right. And many will say, oh, Lord, Lord, we became Christian. The preacher told us we're Christian because we said the magic prayer. And he'll say, yeah, but you didn't follow me. And if you're not following me, you're not going to end up where I'm leading you. That's right. You know, and they say, sorry, I don't know you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, okay, so that's a lot of stuff. Now, now here is the thing. Before we go on, I'm going to do this. And this is going to be difficult. Okay. Maybe not that difficult, but... Here's a blank sheet of paper. Sure. And we're going to make a timeline. Okay. And this is when you were born. If you want me to write the year, I'll write it. 84. 1984. And this is 2017. That's right. Today. Mm -hmm. Which we're recording on October 4th. Now, if you want, you can take and you can draw a line here. Mm -hmm. You can put a line anywhere you want on here about your Christian history. Oh, okay. Like, like, when did you believe the Bible? When were you old enough? Or you, somebody taught you, you went to church? Right. When did you actually believe the true gospel of Christ? When, another line, when did you uh, make a decision to repent completely? Or did you ever make a decision to repent completely? Right. And number three, if you were baptized, you can put when you were baptized. So that's what we call a timeline. So why don't you make a mark cool. and write yeah. a date, and then and then we're not going to, I'm not going to, there's no wrong answer. The only right answer is the truth, okay? Because it's good. just, it is what it is. I was saved at a very early age. Uh, my parents were both Christians. Uh, they valued us going to church, me and my sister, uh, very highly. And we understood the difference between right and wrong at a very young age. And by, by understanding the difference between right and wrong, you are basically accepting the age of accountability. Okay. Meaning that uh, if you do wrong, there's consequences for it. I also had a, a very good concept of heaven and hell. I understood that Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life. You know, I couldn't hang on to Buddha or anybody else to get me into heaven. And none of those guys rose from the dead and, and went to sit at the right the hand dead. of God. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, so I understood all of those things. And I remember uh, my mother and father were at my bed. And I remember I, I prayed the prayer, asked the Lord to come into my heart. And, and how old were you approximately? I was like maybe first grade. Okay, so how old is a first grade? Seven years old. Seven years old, okay. And then maybe the year following I got baptized. Okay, eight years old. Eight years old was baptized. I'm filling it in for you. Oh, thank you, thank you. It takes me a while to think about it, so you can, I can oh, think. Oh, yeah, it's right. fine. Okay. Everybody's timeline is their own personal thing, you know? That's right. And it's just a, just like an icebreaker. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh. Oh, I'll write it down. Okay. Yeah, so I went to a Christian school all the way up until, you know, I graduated. Uh, they taught us Bible just like it was a history class. So I have a really good understanding of both the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, the problem is having a, a good head knowledge of the Bible is one thing, but being able to apply that head knowledge in your everyday life is 100% completely different. You know, uh, marking the right answers on a test is easy, but when you go out and you try to witness to people, uh, that's a different thing. Yeah, and especially so, if they give you hassle. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. And uh, you have your emotions flaring up. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I, I fell out of the church for a little while. Uh, 
I still had my relationship with the Lord, but you know, I just saw a lot of hypocrisy in the church, and it kind of disgusted me. But you know what? There's always going to be the hypocrites in yeah. the church. Yeah. And I thought about it like this the other day. You know, going to the gym, it would be kind of like stopping going to the gym because there were fat people there. Yeah. You know, they yeah. need the gym too. The hypocrites need the church too. Yeah. So uh, when I moved out here to Hawaii, uh, that's when I was able to really recommit uh, myself to finding a, a church body to serve in and to also help with my own personal relationship with the Lord because of course you know that's what it's all about anyway. And then what year did you uh, come here and get involved with Honolulu Church? Uh, it was 2012, 2013. Okay. So I didn't, oh, I didn't become involved with the Honolulu International Christian Church until maybe last year but yeah. I have been involved in church here yeah. in Hawaii for the time that I've been here. Yeah, like you went to that Waipaho Free Will Baptist Church. Right, I went there for four years. Four years. That's right. I'll write it down. I abbreviate it. I'm going to give this to you after, okay? Okay, cool. Okay, and then uh, four years. And uh, when you before you moved here, you were also in the Free Will Baptist Church on the mainland. I was a different? member of a Free Will Baptist Church, but I was not um, active. I wasn't okay. a regular attendee. Or okay, before you moved to Hawaii, right? That's when you were thinking about. You were discouraged because, like the Bible says, there's a story about that. It says Jesus told a parable mm -hmm. that. Uh, a man and his workers, they planted a field. And the workers came back later and said, what is this? We planted good seed. There's weeds growing up and choking out the plants. Mm -hmm. Now, personally, I relate that to a congregation. But now the Bible might relate to it as the world. So you guys read it yourself. Mm -hmm. but, but here's what happened. So uh, the workers told the farmer, what should we do? Should we go pull up the plants or the weeds that are choking out the good plants. Right. I mean, this I, this can be in any congregation. I've never seen a congregation in my whole entire life, and I'm 71 years old already, that doesn't have a situation where somebody will say something or do something and offend somebody, That's somebody right. in the congregation. And then they'll say, oh, there, I see hypocrites in the church, but Jesus said it's those who are sick who need a doctor, not those who are well. Amen. Just like what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And you know, you've experienced, you're old enough, because how old are you about? 33. Yeah, 33. I'll write it down. So you know. <laughs> so, <forget. laughs> so anyway, so you, you've got enough experience, and you just said you saw that. I've seen it. We've all seen it. Mm -hmm. So what we can do is we can be like a doctor. Which, which is like a preacher, maybe. Right. And he's trying to help heal the people in the congregation. And he's telling the people in the congregation, bring in the sick people to get healed. Because right. Jesus said, it's those who are sick who need a doctor, not those who are well. So you're going to see all kinds of people in the congregation. Then you have the nurses that are helping the doctors. Mm -hmm. And that would be people in the congregation that are encouraging each other and helping. That's right. And then you get the patients. That's the people that are coming in and saying they're seeking God. And, and, and uh, they got various problems they're trying to overcome and get set free from. Mm -hmm. And then some of those people who are patients are going to look around and say, Hey, I got a problem with alcohol and drugs and I'm going to church. I'm trying to get better. But I see somebody over here that got a problem with alcohol and drugs. That's a hypocrite. I'm leaving. <laughs> Yeah. You know, it's silly stuff. So, so if somebody wants to be in fertile soil and they say, everybody here is a bunch of unrepentant alcoholics, I'm out of here because I go to church and the guy next to me in the pew is selling me drugs. <laughs> you know, the thing and if he seeds. wants to go to more fertile soil and find a more fertile soil, that's okay. But, but there's three kinds of people in a hospital, doctors, nurses, and patients. Yeah. yeah. So we only got a few minutes left, man. We're going to have a part two on this. Yeah, okay. So we're going to continue. But so so this is your timeline. And uh, and now uh, uh, you're still in this transition period from 2013 to 2017, yeah? That's right. 
That's four year period here, which you're in this period here. That's right. Right now. And and we're studying a Bible here, which is called a discipleship study. Mm -hmm. So here is your timeline. I'm going to hold it up. Doesn't matter if you can't see it, because we talked about it. <laughs> and you're going to keep this, Mike. Yeah, I'm going to frame this. Yeah, good deal. Have you autograph it? All right. So we're saying. Uh, you, you read this. You explain this to them You in your own words. So, yeah. Just explain it because they can't see it. I was, I was led to the Lord uh, by my mother and father at seven. Of course, they explained to me the importance of, of baptism, the full submersion. Uh, and I was baptized at eight years old. I grew up in a Christian home, Christian mm -hmm. church, uh, a really, really good intellectual knowledge of the Bible. Uh, and after high school, kind of fell out, uh, got in with the wrong crowd, you know, things like that. Uh, still loved the Lord, but definitely was not seeking Him first. Like, and not necessarily following the Lord. No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I guessed it. <laughs> uh, you got it. You got it. Uh, but uh, when I moved to Hawaii, that really was a, a game changer for me. And that was in 2012. And so for the last four years, uh, up until this point, uh, October the 4th, 2017, uh, trying to find a way to best serve the Lord. Good deal, right on. So, you did a Seeking God study before. I did. With our friend Chaz and Mike Watari. Mm -hmm. and, and that was okay, you got through it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> through it. <laughs> okay, that's just, that's just one. This is a discipleship study. Uh -huh. So. We got one minute left. I'm going to okay. see what we got coming up on this discipleship study because we're going to continue into part two. Uh, we we just re read about what's the difference between Christian and disciple. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're the same. They're the same. It's just a word, you know. Uh huh. And of course, in America, we have this thing about we define our own words for ourselves. Oh, it's and then uh, when different people have different definitions for words. They're not communicating with each other. They're talking two different languages. That's right. And and they're not communicating. So if we could have a set the the, the uh, set the table where we're saying Christian and disciple is the same. You know what I think would be a great way to go into part two. We, we were talking about Christians, disciples, and then sometimes God calls us to be teachers. And it'll be a really interesting way to see if teacher is incorporated with uh, Christian and disciple. We're going to do that. That'll be the name of our next tro program. All right. Teacher, now this is over. Part two is coming up next time. See you guys. Thanks.